Hi there! So today I am going to show you a very simple activity called mystery bags. So the things that you need for mystery bags is paper bags, and these are really easy to get. You can buy like a hundred of them for less than two dollars at Walmart. Okay, and you need a couple. So what I suggest is for mystery bags, you have at least one bag for every two kids. Even better is if you can give every kid one bag, okay? Now, in mystery bags, the whole concept is that you would put items or an item in the bag. So for instance, here, I've got paper clips. I'm gonna put a few paper clips in the bag, like so. And then for objects for mystery bags, paper clips are a great way to start. Keys, popcorn, for Halloween, different kinds of candy. Um, I have teachers that do a mystery bag or box, because sometimes kids are rough with these. Um, you can do a mystery box where you keep items in a box. Um, and those items have something to do with introducing the unit. So in mystery bags, once you put your item in the, the bag, you're gonna just close it up. like so, like you're making a lunch, and staple it, okay? So you can do a whole class set of these for probably like a half hour or so. Now, um, the idea behind the mystery bag is that the driving question you want your kids to think about is using what I call your scientific superpowers or your senses, figure out what is in the bag. Okay, now you'll find, you can tell kids, they can do almost anything to the bag except break it, right? So, as you can hear, it has a weird, interesting sound. Now, obviously, if you did bags, like several different kinds of bags, you might fill one with popcorn, which sounds very different than the paper clips. You can fill some with Legos. There's all kinds of things. Sky's the limit with what you want to put in the bag, okay? But the idea is to give your kids practice with the science and engineering practices. Now, mystery bags is one of those activities that is kind of short and sweet. You can do it for a half hour. You can do it for 15 minutes in subsequent days. And each day, you can continue to add evidence to the, the uh, mystery bag to figure out what's in the bag, OK? Now, some questions that you can ask students as this is happening. The first one, obviously, is what do you think is in the bag? But the most important question you want the kids to come after is, why? Why do you think those things are in the bag? What evidence did you collect through your scientific investigation, right? Because what they're doing is they're running an investigation. They're trying to figure out what's in the bag. Um, what evidence did you collect with your scientific investigation to make you determine what is in the bag? Now, when kids talk about what's in the bag, you can call that a working hypothesis because that's what it is. It's a working hypothesis, a hypothesis of what they believe is in the bag. What I suggest is the first time kids do this, have every kid have a bag. They may be all alike in the beginning and then give kids a few minutes to try and figure out what's in the bag while they're figuring it out, while they're looking, shaking, listening, smelling, touching, feeling the weight, and things like that, you would circulate around and encourage kids to try and use their senses to investigate. Now, where the science and engineering practices fall in is that this is an automatic learning cue because it engages kids in their curiosity. They want to know what's in the bag. You're feeding that curiosity because you're saying, OK, you guys are scientists. Here's a bag, and inside there's something in the bag that's probably familiar to you. But you need to be able to use your senses, your logic, your thought processes to figure out what's inside. OK? And kids will do some pretty clever things when they have a bag like this. Sometimes they'll, they'll um, shake it, sometimes they'll compare weights, um, sometimes they'll talk to each other, so that's the other thing. Give them a few minutes to independently investigate and then pair them up. 
and then do a think pair share, right? Together, you've thought about and you've given evidence for what you think is in the bag. Pair together with the person next to you and then discuss what are the three most important findings, evidence that make you think about what is in the bag. So for instance, maybe if a kid thinks paper clips, which they may or may not think, you, you can ask, well, why do you think that? Well, because it sounds like there's more than one in here. There maybe is a metallic-y sound to it, right? Um, there's going to be several pieces of evidence. For you as a teacher, it's going to be important for you to have either have the kids record or you as the teacher record what they're finding. What did they do and what did they find, okay? Another way to run mystery bags, especially if they're familiar with it, is that you may have several different bags like in a station. So maybe you have a station of three of these bags and in each bag is something different, okay? The thing about having three different things like that is now kids will automatically compare and contrast between the three different bags. Notice how you're hitting a lot of the standards, the 21st century standards of thinking, comparing, making differences, inferring, so on and so forth. All that wonderful, healthy stuff that we don't get if we're just memorizing facts. So three different kinds of bags. What do you think are in the bags? What are your hypotheses, right? How do you know? Another thing that teachers will want to do, and you really shouldn't most of the time, I would say at least 75% of the time, don't open the bag. Remember, in science, there's no one that stands in the front and says, this is the answer, you got it right. In science, it's all about continually adding evidence, testing for that evidence, using multiple inferences, listening to different points of view, debating and going back and testing again. That's the spirit of science. What I've learned is the hard cognitive work that goes into trying to figure out what's in the bag, making that inference and staking a claim, yes, I believe such and such is in the bag, is the important piece that kids take away from something like this. When the bag never opens, they will continually think about it. You can even leave the bag as a station or hanging around in the room. And kids will constantly want to come back and test something, try something out, and think about it. All of that is the work that needs to be acknowledged. How does it get acknowledged? By not opening the bag. Because as soon as you open the bag and kids find out what is inside the bag, all of that thought process and all of that work that they went into, all of the um, hypotheses, all of that gets thrown away because then they go back into their automatic programming. I'm right, I'm wrong, we're done, let's move on. And you don't want that because then you've just erased all of the work that they've done. So it's really important, 75% of the time, don't open the bag. Maybe other times you do, like for instance, I don't know, say you wanna give kids a treat, right? Like candy or something for Halloween or, or for a, an award or a prize. Then when they do the mystery bag, yeah, you can go ahead and open it and everybody can enjoy. But for a lot of this, especially when you first introduce this, don't open the bag, okay? That's all I've got for today, thank you.